I'm done. I'm going to give you one more nugget. I'm going to give you one more nugget. Because you don't understand the in-between. You got mad at God. And you said, you know what? It ain't worth it. It's everything that the devil wanted to do. He's testing your identity. He's testing your lifestyle. Now he's testing your destiny. You know what? You said, I, I give up. Let me give you another nugget. Don't you ever, 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 never, ever mistake God's process for punishment. So you're being processed, but you don't like it because it don't feel good. And it ain't working out the way that you said it. Don't you ever mistake his process for punishment. I'm done. I'm done, but watch this. Let me. I said I had some keys, right? So watch this. I am going to show you. Hear what I'm saying? What God said. I didn't say the loud. I'm going to show you what he said. Amen. And I'm going to close like this. I hear you, Holy Spirit. So. Pastor can relate to this. And I prayed, Pastor. And God gave me this revelation. Man, I was bubbling when I was in your office. Little becomes much when God is in there's a young man who comes from humble beginnings. And he lives in the outback, in the forest, in the woods, barely anything. But he's a bright mind. And he uses his mind to make some inventions. And all of a sudden he becomes famous, sort of like the Apple dude, but I don't know what they mean. He becomes famous. He moves to New York City, and there he has all kind of wealth and everything's coming in. He meets a, a, a young lady from the city. They get married, they have kids, and they start a family. And then one day, he's a man of God. One day, the voice of God says, give it all up. He said, give it all up. He said, I've blessed you. You know me. Give it all up and go back to a simple lifestyle. He goes back home and he tells his wife. And he says, babe, God said to give it all up. I'm going to receive my calling now. Not to be a preacher, but to preach in the place where I came from. So he goes back and his family thinks that he's crazy and everybody stopped talking to him because guess what? That check ain't coming in no more. And all of a sudden, he goes. And there's six months goes by and a year goes by and a year and a half goes by and now guess what? No money's coming in. He has nothing. And he's down to his last chance. And his wife is looking at him like, I ain't come from this place. Son, you, I know you heard you, you said you heard from God, but I'm about ready to leave. And it's getting like that. What's wrong with you? So the man of God goes into praying and fasting. And one day, cleaning up, he's cleaning up a closet, he's sweeping. And all of a sudden, a broom handle hits this shelf. Come on. And from this shelf falls three shotgun slugs. I didn't say buckshot where it goes everywhere. I said them metal slugs. And all of a sudden, he looks in the back of the closet, and there's an old shotgun. And he takes the three slugs, and he loads the three slugs, and he begins to walk out on his property. As he first walks out on his property, maybe about 40 yards, he sees a squirrel. He said, all right, God. Put the shotgun on the squirrel. And all of a sudden, as he pulled the trigger, something like, and the squirrel went the other way. So he said, okay. So he walks down about a, a mile on his property, young man. You can appreciate this. And a mile that I know you can because I used to play, I used to play Nintendo with you, how you got to shoot the rabbit. And you got to find out what the pattern is. Okay, so he stops and sees all these rabbits. They're moving in this different pattern. And he got it. One, two, three, back. One, two, three, back. One, two, I got it. So he picks the fattest rabbit. One, two, three, and the rabbit goes the other way. So he's walking down the property and he said, got one shot left. And he walks about five miles down on the end of this property and he sits down next to a lake and he's just looking and he said, God, I know, I know this is, you said expected in. This ain't no expected in. I'm about ready to lose everything. And all of a sudden he looks up and in the tree is a wild turkey. Wild turkeys, y'all got to understand, go anywhere between 40 and 70 pounds. That's some good eating. So he pulls up the shotgun and he aims it right at the turkey. And all of a sudden, the voice of God comes down from heaven and says, Son, let me tell you this. Whatever you do, I told you I was going to give you something. Whatever you do, pray first. Aim high. And stay focused. And so the man of God says, Father, 
I know you. You have never left me in the eleventh hour and the fifty-ninth minute. You have always come for me, come through for me. You have always been there for me. I trust you, Lord. And he began and he went to pull the trigger. And all of a sudden, out the peripheral side of his vibe, he looked over and he saw a deer. And the deer was standing there like he was looking, he was looking at him like this. So he looked at the deer and he turned the shotgun, put it on center mass. And right before he pulled the trigger, he heard. And he stopped and he looked down between his legs and striking position and coil was a rattlesnake. And he was ready to kill him. And all of a sudden, his shotgun on a deer, the voice of God from heaven came back again and said, son, I ain't going to tell you again. Whatever you do, pray first, aim high, and stay focused. The man of God asked not to startle the snake. He said, I heard you, God, I'm going back. See, some of us need to go back to our first instruction. That's why you stuck. God gave you an instruction you haven't gone back. So he went back to his first instruction. He turned back to the turkey, and he prayed. He said, God, again, for you I live, for you I die, for you I have my total being. He pulled the trigger. The kickback from the shotgun knocked him into the lake because it was an old shotgun. The butt of the shotgun fell off. And all of a sudden, he fell in the lake. When he got up, out of the water. He looked up and he had a dead turkey. And the, and the slug was so forceful that it went through the turkey, ricocheted off the tree, killed the deer. Not only did he kill the deer, when he woke up, he looked in his pockets, he had a fishing jacket on, they were filled with fish. Not only were they filled with fish, the rattlesnake, the enemy that was about ready to strike the butt, killed the enemy. Let me tell you what that is in the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 13 says, For there is no temptation except what is common to man. And God is faithful. When you are tempted, He will never give you more than you can bear. But we'll always make a way of escape. Let me tell y'all something right now. Let me tell y'all something right now that I'm sitting down. I told you I was going to show you what the Word says. Don't you ever forget as long as you got God, you got everything. God will give you everything that you need. And when you think that you don't have enough, and when you think that your resources are all out, God will replenish you. Don't allow the devil to steal your identity, your lifestyle, or your destiny. Thank you. Thank you. As you remain standing, as you stand on your feet, the man of God has spoken. Amen. God has spoken to your heart today. The Bible is very clear that all of us have sinned and will fall short of the glory of God. The Bible is very clear that the wages of our sin is death this eternal separation.